Hey guys, Brendan Productions here, and uh, welcome to this tutorial. Now, uh, this tutorial is also going to be in HD 1080p, and uh, I apologize, but this tutorial is also going to have YouTube built-in advertisements. This does build in a little revenue for me, but um, yeah, so that's a good thing. Pays for my gas now that I'm a licensed driver. Anyway. Um, so today I'm actually going to be starting a series of tutorials. I don't know how many uh, parts it will have, but it's actually going to be on how to uh, interact with Twitter in a VB.net application. So there are several ways to interact with Twitter, but uh, the way we're using is going to probably be the easiest for both you and me, and I've actually used it before in uh, my applications such as Twit Control and then my retired application Unreal Twitter. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, there's a few things we're going to need to get started. Um, we're going to need this Twitter VB uh, library. It, it can be found at twittervb.codeplex.com. And uh, I actually already have this downloaded on my. Uh, no, I don't. I do not have this downloaded on my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and download it. Just click on downloads, and then uh, you can choose your version over here. Uh, I'm going to use 2.5 because this is the version I know how to actually uh, work with. Uh, they might not have changed anything in 3.0, but I don't want to risk it for tutorial purposes. So we're just going to extract this DLL file, and I'm going to actually just uh, put it on my desktop here. And uh, then once it's onto your desktop, you don't need this page anymore. And uh, now what you need to do is actually go to dev.twitter.com and register an application. This is a really simple process. You just need to enter a few pieces of information about your application and then once you're done you come to this page which uh, you're not supposed to show anybody but I'm showing you because I'm such a nice guy so uh, we've got Unreal Twitter here which is my application and then it gives us a bunch of info the info that we're interested in is consumer key and consumer secret so we're just going to save those for now so um, now what we need to do is actually we can start on our application since we're all set uh, go ahead and pause the video if you didn't get all that done but um, I'm just going to start with a Windows Forms application. I'm going to call this one Twitter Tutorial. And then I'm going to press OK. OK. So the first thing we need to do in uh, our project is actually add the Twitter VB reference. So I'm just going to browse and go back to my desktop here and find it. It's Twitter VB. And uh, once that's done, that's good. Now we're just going to want to import it. So imports Twitter VB2. And then um, right under public class form one, we're actually going to public TW as new Twitter client. Uh, Twitter, maybe it's Twitter API. I think it's Twitter API. Let's go with that. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do when uh, the way this application works is uh, first we need to get the user to actually say it's okay for the uh, program to access my account. So Twitter VB provides a really easy way of doing this. But the first thing we should probably do is save our consumer key and consumer secret in a string file. So I'm going to dim consumer as string equal to and dim consumer secret as string equal to nothing. And uh, now I just need to pop these in here. So consumer key, right here. And then consumer secret is right here. So now that these are saved, we have a very simple way of doing this. Um, we just uh, need to click a button. It will open a web page. This web page will have a verification code on it. This verification code needs to be uh, imported into this application. Then another button needs to be pressed. So, with that information, we know we need two buttons and a text box. Sorry if that was really fast here. I just, this is the basic stuff, and uh, you can alter it if you really want to. I'm not going to. And uh, now we have uh, this button, which I'm going to change the text to open code. And then uh, this text box needs the code inserted in it, and then I'm just going to type enter for this button. Okay, so we seem to be all good, and now we need to actually type in the code for the open code button. So Twitter VB actually makes this really simple. All we need to do is ask Twitter VB, or I think that's what it's called, to get a URL, 
and uh, that URL is going to be what we need for the user to get the code. So we're actually going to create a try block here just in case anything goes wrong. And then we're going to dim URL as string equal to, and this is the part where we ask Twitter VB for its information. So TW, because that's our Twitter VB thing, and then uh, get, uh, it's either authentication or authorization. Let me find out real fast. Okay, it is get authorization link. And then it asks for two pieces of information, our consumer key and our consumer key secret. So, we actually already said, oh, we need to actually move these into the, uh, up there. And now we have them, consumer and consumer secret. Those are good. And uh, now all we need to do is actually open up the page. So we're going to process.start and then URL. So this will just uh, create the link and ask the user's web browser to open this page, which it will do, and then they have to log into the page with their Twitter account, and then it will give them a code. So assuming that they entered the code here, which we're going to check when we uh, press button to click, so if text box one dot text is nothing, then we're going to display a message box you must insert a code and if it's not empty then we can proceed so we need to actually create a boolean to see if this code that they entered is valid so I'm going to say dim is valid as boolean equal to tw dot and uh, now we need to use one of these things Um, it's actually tw.validate pin. And uh, then it actually, you just need to insert the pin, which is textbox1.text. And now we need to see, um, that will return a boolean. If the pin was correct, it will change the boolean to true. If not, it will change it to false. So we're going to say if is valid is true, then. But if it wasn't true, we're going to display a message box saying wrong code. So if it is true, then we need to go ahead and do uh, this validation thing. So the way the validation works is it actually gives us two other codes to keep track of. And uh, these codes are attached to the username. So what we're going to do is create two more strings. So, uh, And these strings are just like the consumer key and uh, consumer key secret. So, except they're called OAuth tokens. Oh, a string equal to, and then tw.oauth token, and then uh, dim oauth token secret as string equal to tw.oauth token secret. All right, and uh, this is all the information we need, but uh, we're actually going to need to insert or access these variables from other subs, so I'm just going to go ahead and public them up here. oauth auth token as string, public oauth token secret as string and then just delete these dims and these as strings and then we are all good so uh, once this button is pressed we're going to have the information that we need and we can just start start displaying information so the first thing you probably want to do if you're building a Twitter client is you're probably going to actually want to update the status well this is actually very easy um, so of course we're going to need a text box. I'm actually going to create a label here that says update status and uh, going to make this multi-line and then there's going to be a button down on the bottom and this button will say update. Now this is actually a very simple code um, the first thing we need to do is uh, tell the Twitter client to authorize with the information that we provided. So, tw dot author or authenticate with, and then we need the consumer key, which we saved. Consumer, consumer secret, the token, which is OAuth token, and token secret, OAuth token secret. See why we saved all those. And um, once that's done, we can actually just go ahead and type tw.update, 
and uh, the text, which in our case is textbox2.text. And there we go. We have an updated Twitter status. So let's go ahead and uh, test this out. Oh, and there are errors. I think that's just... What, what is it? Uh, we may possibly need to check the references again. It might have strangely got deleted. Um, let's remove it and add it again, I suppose. And that should work. Let's debug again. What is going on? Hold on a second, let me try to figure out what's going on. I'll get back to you. Okay, I don't know if this is the fix, but it pretty much says here, the reference to assembly of Twitter VB cannot be resolved because it has a dependency on system.web version 4.0, blah, 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 which is not the currently targeted framework. So we need version 4.0 as the targeted framework, apparently. So if we go to Project uh, Toolbox, I think it is, or Toolbox uh, Properties, and uh, let's go ahead and try to find this thing. Oh, it's not that. Let's go ahead and try to find this thing that it wants us to uh, change here. Maybe it's compile. Advanced compile options. Targeted framework. .NET framework 4. And, uh... Oh! We need to save, I bet. Save. Build. Debug. No. .NET framework 4. Okay. Yes. File, save, build, go back to the form, run. Yes! Success! Okay. Anyway, so first thing we want to do is press the open code button. And that opens up a web page here. So I'm going to authorize this app with my Twitter username. And then it gives me this code right here. So then I go back to the program and uh, type in 7291826. Type press enter. And uh, that should do it. And now we just need to type in our status that we want to update with. So let's say this Twitter update is for a new tutorial that I am recording. And then we're going to press update. And it didn't return any errors. So let's go ahead and go to twitter.com slash brandonio21. It's taking a while to load. Okay, I had to refresh the page, and uh, look at this. This Twitter update is for a new tutorial that I am recording. So now you know how to um, actually uh, update your Twitter status, and uh, yes. So now we can actually get information about our uh, thing. I believe we can, at least. So what we're going to do is uh, label 2. Once we press enter, we are um, then going to change label 2 to the selected username. So we're going to actually copy over this code because we need to authenticate every time we try to do something. And then we're going to do label2.text equals tw. And then let's try to find where our username would be. Could be proxy username. Account information, that's always good. Dot name. Or screen name. Let's go name. Okay, so now if I run the program and uh, I I you don't have to do this every time. So what you can do is you can actually save these um these OAuth token and OAuth token secrets into settings and then every time the program loads you can actually just load those settings in but um, I haven't done that so we need to actually go over and authorize again so 2226660 enter wrong code it looks like but I did enter 2226660 let's try again Uh, 
It might be because we already authenticated. That could be it. Try restarting the uh, application. Opening a code. Authorizing the app. 623-7770. There was an in zero. Okay, and uh, as you can see here, we uh, pressed enter, and this time it worked. I don't know, the application just either I was typing the code wrong or it just needed to be restarted. And uh, label 2 actually got changed to Brandonio 21 after a little bit of waiting. But yes, it got changed to Brandonio 21, so you can actually access all type of account, Twitter account information in here as well. So that's good. So um, in the next part, because uh, frankly I don't feel like doing more right now, <laughs> Uh, we're actually going to be talking about how to receive the timeline and uh, and only your tweets and just receive several more amounts of information uh, into your client. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to start making a Twitter client with vb.net. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. And uh, yes, talk to you guys later. Peace.